What's going on guys? Today I'm gonna tell you about one of the worst investments I ever made. It's gonna look like this. Let's go. Welcome to the channel guys, my name is Travis. I make videos that hopefully inspire you to make an investment or start a business. And if you already have a business, maybe I can help you make it better. If you do currently have a business, drop the name and the city you're in in the comments below and I'm gonna pick a random comment and I'm gonna go onto Google and leave you a five star review for your business. Guys, I've been doing all these videos lately about how I sold a big piece of property and made quite a bit of money and I'm reinvesting this into other things. So a lot of these types of videos make me feel a little bit uncomfortable. I'm putting a lot out there on YouTube. I do a lot of this to try to help other people, not to brag or not to look like I'm like the smartest guy in the room or anything like that at all. So I thought it would be pretty good to kind of hedge those videos by doing a video every now and then called My Worst Investments. And that's what I'm gonna do today. Sometimes I suffer from something called smarter than syndrome. This is when everybody around you tells you something's not gonna work, but you think, well, I'm probably smarter than them and I can make it work even though they didn't. Sometimes this works really well for you because you actually can make something work that other people tell you won't work. But in my case, in this particular instance, I probably should have listened to a lot of people that told me that this wasn't gonna work the way I thought it was gonna work. When you're in agriculture, you think about everything on a per acre basis because at the end of the day, your asset is your land and what you're trying to do is maximize how much money per acre you can make on that land. I had a cattle operation on my ranch. It's pretty standard in this area for somebody to run about one cow per every five to eight acres. I sold the females for about twelve to fifteen hundred dollars and the males I sold for a lot less as steers and on average I got about a thousand dollars per cow when I went to sell them. So at my place we could run about one cow per five acres because I had improved grasses, I had done a lot to make my place more fruitful for the cows to give them more to forage on and to eat. So on average, my ranch could make about $200 per acre. And this isn't bad, but it's also not a lot of money either, right? This is a gross number. So you still have a lot of money that's gonna come out of that figure after that. This is just your revenue number. Anybody that's ever run cattle knows how hard it is to make money. So I was always looking for a way to make more money per acre than cows. After doing a bit of research, I stumbled upon something called the Dorper sheep. I know, I know, sheep, right? Dorper sheep are from Africa and there's a whole world where genetics matter a lot. And people show these sheep and one really good sheep with really good genetics could win several thousand dollars at a show or even sell for thousands of dollars right off of my ranch. These sheep, if sold just to help other people stock their sheep, could bring as much as $250 per sheep. And if they were registered, meaning their genetics were full blood, they could bring as much as $500 a sheep easily. Also, these sheep, they don't need much room. So instead of having five acres for one cow, I could have one sheep on one acre on average, right? So instead of making $200 an acre, I could make potentially $500 or $600 an acre um, by running sheep instead of cows. When I'm looking at this strictly on a spreadsheet, I could become a multimillionaire just by converting my whole cattle operation to a sheep operation and utilizing my whole 1100 acres for sheep ranching instead of cattle ranching. So I started by fencing 100 acres with net fence wire because sheep need different type of fencing than cows. I bought special working pens for sheep, 
because you can't work them in the same pens that you work cows on. I paid somebody to come and set everything up for me. And then I bought 65 registered sheep and 65 unregistered sheep. I caught a break on the registered sheep because I found a guy that was ready to retire and he sold me his whole herd at a pretty good price compared to everybody else I saw selling registered sheep. The genetics were really good, so I was like super confident that I had made this stellar deal and I was gonna make a bunch of money. I also bought these special dogs that actually live with the sheep. Their whole purpose in life is to protect these sheep. They're always with them. You put, your, you put their food with the sheep and they eat with the sheep. When the sheep move, they move. They're patrolling the sheep all the time. It was pretty incredible. And again, because genetics of the sheep were so important, my plan was to get my herds up and going, get them stabilized, and then I was going to try to buy the grand champion at the sheep show, um, the biggest sheep show of the year. And I thought by doing this, then everybody would say, Travis has the best genetics, his sheep are the best, and I could command a premium for them. And because I already had, you know, 130 sheep working, I would be churning out quite a bit of sheep because these sheep have like two litters a year. So, and a lot of times they have twins, right? So you're averaging like probably 2.5 sheep per year per sheep, right? So with 130 sheep, I mean, I'm gonna have like close to 300 sheep and I'm gonna lose some, so maybe figure 200 sheep, right? So all this seemed like it was coming together really well. Everything was going really, really good for about two months. And I have to say, I really, really enjoyed raising the sheep. There's really not a lot of things in life that are cuter than a baby sheep. But about three months in, I found my first dead sheep. At first it wasn't a huge concern because I had been told and I had read about that I was gonna lose some sheep. And I also had baby sheep being born at the same time. So a lot of stuff was happening and my herd was actually growing. So that first one, I wasn't super, super worried about. But as time went on, I was losing some to birth related things, but I was also losing them to other things like to predators. And a lot of times a new baby would just disappear. I'd never find any evidence of anything. It would just be gone one day. And it also wasn't just the babies. I was losing adult sheep as well. When I saw an acceleration in the losses of the adult sheep, I involved my local veterinarian. We took fecal samples, trying to figure out what was going on with these sheep. He told me that my sheep had worms, which was kind of a shock to me because we had been very diligent about deworming the sheep on a regular timeline. Also, if we saw one that kind of looked funny, we would deworm it right there. So I didn't understand how they could have worms. Come to find out, sheep over time will grow immune to certain types of dewormers and you have to regularly switch the type of dewormer you're using to prevent this from happening. So we kept trying to treat the sheep again and just stay ahead of this. We were also having other problems. Regularly, my dogs weren't doing what they were supposed to do. They would run away. I would have to go find them and bring them back. It was like a whole thing. I would go out there and you have to check these sheep like every day. So I'd go out to check them. My dog's missing, a sheep is missing or dead. And it was just a whole ordeal. It was like a constant problem. Predators had figured out that there was an easy lunch nearby. And so they were just kind of waiting and every night they would sneak in and get what they wanted. Plus all the buyers that I would get calls from about sheep only wanted females. So I was increasingly having a problem of trying to get rid of males. And if I made them into steers and then sold them, I didn't really get anything for them. So when you averaged it out, I wasn't getting near what I thought I was gonna get on average for these sheep. So after losing like probably a hundred grand and eight months of my life, I decided that 
Raising sheep wasn't for me. I didn't have the time or the expertise to properly do it. And ultimately I had gotten into something too quickly and not fully understood everything that was gonna be needed to properly run this operation. I would say if I was gonna do it the right way, I would have maybe got three or four sheep, maybe five, and started raising those. And once I felt like I really, really understood this, which might take a couple of years, then start to scale up. But what I did is I jumped head first into something that I didn't know much about. And although I was learning quickly, I had gotten out over my skis on the investment. And it's just a classic example of like somebody getting greedy because they saw on a spreadsheet that they were going to make a bunch of money but when they actually put it into works in real life it was just a train wreck so guys i make these videos hopefully to help people out if you like them i'm going to put another one up right here and i'll see you soon in the next one